um, a little bit about the series, um, but just a general introduction to, to Trundles. Most of you have been here before. If you've not been here before, welcome. Um, we do these intimate things. And um, they're intimate on purpose, and that's because the interaction between doing the talk is, is, is really important. It's what it is. It's good to go. Lauren, yeah. you guys are good to go. We're all yeah, here. We're all good to go. Yeah. We're all good to go. <laughs> um, um, so I'll just say, first of all, it's really lovely to have you here, and I'll say a little bit about you, not too much because well, you're going to have, you're going to talk, talk about you. Um, I um, first met Freya in 1989, the end of 1989, and um, at that time, her first book, The uh, Leaves of Yggdrasil, was a relatively quite a new book, and one of the things that struck me was how it had taken London by storm, and. Um, many people who hadn't <coughs> thought about the runes um, were thinking about them. All of a sudden, it was something to think about. And um, I want to ask her more about it, but it seemed to me that... Great coat. Great coat. <laughs> it, it seemed to me that at that time, it was a confluence of interest in the runes that came from people with a ceremonial magical background. It seemed that the chaos guys suddenly thought that instead of this being for something for the boring old people who did folklore and uh, something was cool and it just went on and on and on and at the forefront of this remarkable surfing wave was was Freya um, who was very much in London at that time and very much a, a really forceful personality and a forceful and intelligent writer and speaker and um, the 90s were all about the runes, as far as I remember, and the, the person at the forefront of that was, was Freya's work. But I want to, st so it's lovely to have you here. Uh, that's for them, the bits for you is to say, um, tell me, if you will, just say a little bit about how your magical life, um, I know you've told this story before, but a little bit of how your magical life came to be so entwined with the runes, because I, as far as, you know, a talk like this is, there's lots and lots written about the runes, but for somebody to live with them for as long as you have and have an integral part of your life, in your daily life, in your magical life, in your spiritual life, in your relationships, um, I'm interested in the start of that, and then we'll move on to other parts of it. Well, the first person who ever mentioned runes to me was my first husband, George. And this was in 68. Um, at that time, but he... Uh, he came from, shall we say, a very German angle, so I went, no! <laughs> but the second time was when I was, I went, I left for England, and I, uh, after a bit of a circuitous route, I ended up at Alexander's place and got my first initiation into Wicca. And there was another chappie there, and um, Tony Looker, and he was into the rooms. Mm -hmm. And he mentioned Wotan, and he also mentioned the SS, so no! <laughs> that was the second time I said no. And the third time was when I finally moved to London, and moved in with Lionel and Jean and Zaks, and Zach was given this little booklet by somebody called Carlite Bushelong, and about runes, and he gave it to Lionel, because Lionel came from Coventry, Viking ancestry, so Lionel could do a few that book for Cry and Arrow. Lionel gave it to me, and I took one look, and I said, Sh hmm. So I didn't want to know, and I started just working in, in the craft, you know, doing the monthly sabbats, esbats. And, but at one point, you know, the gods, they were all, always either Greek or Celtic, and it doesn't resonate with me. Certainly not Celtic. Greek, at least, I can appreciate from an intellectual perspective, the philosophers and stuff like that. But Celt, I don't know, it, no, everything, everything was Celt, Celt, Celt. You go around the bookshop, it was Celtic. That was the 80s, 80s it was really uber Celtic time. Uber Celtic. And, and at, one, and at one point I just decided to invoke my own gods, Bodan, Don and Freya, I, so far as I knew they were Dutch gods. And later on I found out that they were Anglo-Saxon and Scandinavian as well. I had, I, I had no education, I never, I grew up in 
the care system, I had no education whatsoever, so I just had to find everything out myself. And then we, there was a quest conference in 82, and there was the word was put out in the pagan occult scene, have you got spare rooms to put people up for the quest conference? And me and Lionel said, yes, we've got three spaces. We were, at that time we had, uh, we were living at Enclave, a house in Tufton Park, which was um, um, a communal house, and we had some spaces, so we put up, so we volunteered to take two or three people. And we got Russell Scott, and he is somebody who was doing the rooms. And so we got, he took me up to, I forgot the name of the place, but it's near East Greenstead. And there was a woman who was doing room readings. And she applied to join my coven. So we went there to interview her, and she was doing, she was going to do me a room reading. And she had this little list of runic meanings done by somebody, Athena Williams, copied from the Pixie magazine, and rooms. And as soon as she laid the rooms out, I had to touch them in order for her to do the reading. But as soon as I put my hands out of the rooms, that was it, they're mine. <laughs> it was a lightning flash. That was it, this was the path I had to go. Right, it was just, and after that, what I did, I borrowed the idea from the craft and I used the, like the moon cakes, but I made, I made rooms and each night, I took one, invoked Wodan and Freya, and then wrote down what I got. And this, and the only reference books available was Elliot and Page. There was absolutely bagel. You know, yeah, Blumenstein. But, and even he was later. And I wasn't going to touch him with a basketball anyway. So then I, I just started writing the, the stuff down, and then in 80. Before I joined the Odinic Rite, and that was okay, but you know, they weren't occultists, so that didn't last long. And there was absolutely nobody, there was no one I could talk to until this bloke Hilma Hilmerson turned up from Iceland. And he invited me over to go there and give a talk for the Theosophical Society, and that was in '85. So I did that, and meantime I was I was writing what later became Leaves of Victor Sale. Then I had Dave the Bat in the cellar, and you know, As you and, do. <laughs> and Dougie, and you know, and they were doing music. So when they were just playing music, and I was really interested in captivating Hilma's attention, because not, not because he fancied him or anything like that, but he was Icelandic, so he, he's got access to runic stuff. So I just started showing off and by chanting the runes. And Hilma said to Tibet, you got to record that. That's gonna go on the next album. So that was Swastikas for Nori. I did uh, a track on called Futha Panzerun. You know, they put an SS tank in the background. There's, you know, and it was all. It was, it was all very cool in the 80s. We were living in the People's Republic of Islington. <laughs> <laughs> this was a reaction against what was then the system. All the people I mentioned, none of them are politically motivated. It was all art. Let that be stated first, right? It was art. And so then Patrick found me up, Patrick O'Kill, and we did the Fruits album. At the same time, I was finishing off Leaves of Victor Hill, but I didn't think it was good enough for a publisher, so I had it privately printed, paid for it, and then went around London, the, the, the bookshops, with copies, six copies for London, six copies for Mysteries, and then never paid me. <laughs> <laughs> and then Compendium in Camden, and then I started. Then I started doing weekend workshops on the rules, 25 quid, all residential food and sleeping included, and it was, but what happened with the workshops, when I did a workshop, I just start off with, you know, 
explaining. And then I got more and more and more information. So I started using, I had a white hair and we bought a little tape recorder and she started taking on the session. I now know that what I did was channeling. But I, I had never heard of channeling. I just got all these ideas about how the cosmology of, of half a mile, how you actually would work them. Would it be necessary in a situation where that was required? I was just tripping out of Onroons and Odin and my aura was flaming all over the place and, and lying on everybody the ankle. I've got sick of hearing about Odin, Odin, Odin. I could blame for Zach ending up in Fleen Barnet <laughs> because of Wotan, you know, he was playing Das Rheingold in the Gnostic Mass, so that, oh, and each time in the Gnostic Mass you say, there is no part that's not of the gods. And I said, there is no part of me that is not of the Aesir. And I kept, kept pushing that current. I really, because I was driven by a force, right? To push that, because I noticed what was enormously frustrating when I had this, all this excellent stuff coming down. There was nobody interested. There was no one who was really into the runes. And Odin, oh, from a um, respectable Gatnerian high priestess, all of a sudden I was a Nazi and state enemy number one. Because I worshipped the Norse god. Would have been alright if it was a goddess, of course. <laughs> so that was, that was where me and Wicca parted, because that's bullshit, I wasn't able to look at it. So far as I was concerned, Odin, first and foremost. And it went from there, then I got involved. Then Kveldolf Gunderson came over in the 90s and he introduced me to the Ring of Trolls in the States. And I, did, I started going regularly to the States to do workshops on the runes. And basically then, and, now, and so it went on. Mm. One of the things that struck me that was very important in your life when I first met you was that you were married to Odin. Yes. And is that, I don't know, I don't know much about the history of that sort of thing, is that a historical thing? I've met women yes. recently, I've met two or three women recently who are married to Odin as well, and maybe, I'm sure, I'm sure not as good wife as you, of course, but... <laughs> 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 it's, it's, it's a bit like Highlander. There can be only one. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad to know that. We've established that clearly. But I, would you say a bit more about that relationship and, and what that means to you? Because you've had... That's been some time now. Uh, it's been, I, I married Odin in uh, November, 28th, 29th of November, 1993. Um, I felt... Okay. I had a fallen out with certain chaos magical people. Mm -hmm who were living in my house and they were fucking me around and they were fucking the old boy around, Lionel. You know, he had the stuff in the office. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that turned into a very nasty, bitter, occult war. Then at one point I woke up and Odin was gone. No contact. None. And I phoned up Kveldolf Gunderson and I said, look, I don't know what's happened, but I've lost my contact. Now this happened before, Steve Wilson can tell you. But this was more serious. It was gone. I was deaf, blind, mute on the astral eye. It was gone. And Kveldilver said that there was a big crust of rust. You know, the stuff that you get an eye in corrosive was on my crown chakra. And Kveldilver went out on the astral and smashed it with his spear. And then the idea, then I had been, meantime, I had been on the sly. I had been reading stuff about Fudon. I mean, I read my my Adairans, the Fine Horseman in '84, and I knew yes. that's what they do. That's what I want with Odin. Okay. Right. Right. So um, the idea, I said to Kveldover, well, you know, the, you may think I'm absolutely crazy, but I feel that the only way that my connection with Odin, because I was ready to end my life, well, because without Odin, there is no point. You know, just eating. I mean, what's the point, right? So, that's when Kveldover turned up with an agrarian old ritual from Jan Fries. And we basically, there is the ritual of the last chief that is on the land.
-hmm. And that married the old man, being Odin, but it was, you know. And we basically altered that and turned it into a proper wedding ritual. Phil was the priest. He did... Uh, it wasn't my fault. The <laughs> there is a DVD. Uh, well, that, yeah, so vi you got, yeah, there's a video yeah. which later then was transferred to DVD. And so we did that uh, marriage ritual only based on, on that, yes, it was traditional, but... And um, that's how I got married to Odin. And then uh, for nine years, I kept my mouth shut. It was a secret, only the people involved knew. It was a, a magical, it was the culmination of nine years hard magical work with Lieber Astart and Valverelli, Crowley's. And instead, at the end of the ritual, you destroy all of it. I incorporated it in myself by this ritual of marriage, which does involve a lifelong vow of celibacy, which I've kept. And then, of course, after nine years, Diana Paxton, she was, I thought, possessed by Odin, and she told me, um, you've got to make this public, this is not just for you, this is for the folk, this is the path of, you know, fine. I put it on my website. Within a week, Lori, Kalina, copy, copy, copy. The Yanks ripped it off, they copied it. They were the Odin's wives, and they were on the internet coming out with all the filthy they did, and all the filth, and everything was turned into sexual filth. Right? Now they're doing this kind of bloodletting rituals at Cauldron Farm, and it is even worse what they do, you know, sticking needles in people's hearts with saline to simulate the initiation on the tree and the spear and all that. And, and so it, it degenerated, it, it just turned all to degenerate stuff and I do not acknowledge any other than me because I worked for it. I have earned it. The Yanks, of course, they're just it and then try to exploit it into a big ego trip. They strut around, you know, in, in Viking gear and they are the wives of Odin, so I just, I withdrew from the whole scene. I haven't been, I just, I will not. These people are not my peers. I don't want to know. So, I, and now, of course, as you said, it's an over circus, everybody is now at it. So the whole concept, what for me was the sublime, most holiest of holiest initiation, was turned to a pile of yank. So that's the story of that. That's that. Did you get your contact back? Yes! All right, then that's, that's, that's the bit that I hear. That's fantastic. That's yes, fantastic. yes, yeah. but it's more on an integrative level. Okay. It's symbiotic. It is totally symbiotic. You know? It's incorporated within my own energy field. Mm. I was going to just say a, a little bit more about what it's like for you having... I mean, you, you've done the room work that you've done. You've been doing that for so long. Is it more interior now? Yes. Because one of the things I remember a long-term practitioner once wrote, and I remember reading it, and they said, at the beginning of your magical life, there'll be a lot more paraphernalia and a lot more formality. And they said, over the years, much of that, if you carry on, and many people don't, but if you carry on after the years, there's likely to be less and less and less on the outside as it becomes more and more on the inside. And I'm, I'm curious if that's true for you as well. Well, I've never been one for big rituals and paraphernalia. I mean, I've got a bed with rooms and a few clothes, and that's what I work with. Yeah. You know, I've given up dressing in, in, in uh, the, the Viking period gear. I don't, don't need it, you know. Are you, are you still chanting? Are you still, did you ever get into doing the right, the, the Viking Tai Chi? 
the root did you, know, uh, you, you know, mean the staff thank you no, 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 no. That wasn't you who did that because I remember, no, I remember no, when the chaos was, guys. Were, that was that yes, was that was somebody time. called Ivar, okay. who uh, lived. I think if I, that that is an uh, a Norwegian family tradition, okay. which then was brought out in, in Australia. I think mm -hmm. it started and then it migrated. No, I never got into that. It is actually a form of martial arts. Okay. And uh, no, never attracted.